What mode should we be in if we're graphing radians? So double check that in case you let someone else borrow your calculator for geometry and they turned it back to degrees. Radians we want. So we're just going to type in 1.75 cosine of pi x, close your parentheses, plus 2.25. Before we just start hitting the graph button, we want to make sure we understand the window process. It's kind of one of those things that kids are so bad at because there's never been like an, a, for, a formal official day of just teaching how to set the window on your calculator. It's like we could use a whole chapter of just knowing how to use our calculator, um, but it doesn't really fall in anyone's curriculum. So we don't do it explicitly with you, but it's so important, okay? We're talking about a yo-yo. X is talking about, or T, is talking about the number of seconds, right? The number of seconds after you first grab your yo-yo. How long do you feel like playing with a yo-yo for? 10 seconds, right? How long, just think about a period. How long from the time you drop the yo-yo and get it back up to the top do you think that that one cycle would take? Maybe a second? Right? So if you're doing a yo-yo, you're dropping it, you're getting it back up, maybe a second. So maybe we just look at the first five seconds, because I would I would think we get a couple cycles in. So if I do the, the window from zero to five seconds, because that's what my x-axis stands for is time in seconds, my y-axis is getting at the height of the yo-yo. Well, how far off the ground does the yo-yo really ever come? 20 feet? That's ridiculous, right? Five feet? Maybe five feet if you're doing the yo-yo up at your head level, which you probably aren't. Zero, two, five. We certainly don't need a negative height. So make sure you are in the ballpark first, because otherwise, if you just are just hitting, you can't really do the zoom fit. I know people like that, but it doesn't really work with word problems, because the word zoom fit, the calculator doesn't know what you're trying to hone in on. They don't know what this equation stands for. You do. So here we have a very good representation of what's going on. So if we wanted to sketch the function, we can scale this exactly the way our calculator is scaled. We went from 0 to 5 with our height. So I'll make that 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, and it was enough. Remember, on a regents, you're going to have to label your axis and scale your axis. Thank you. On the x-axis, this was seconds, and we did what? Zero to five also? We do five seconds? So one, I'm going every other hash mark to kind of use the graph in its entirety. Now, it always boggles our mind on the regents when the instructions are to graph a function and people can't get it right. You have a calculator. Am I just going to sketch this image and kind of hope it looks approximately right? No, it needs to be exactly right. What can you do on your calculator to make sure these points are exact? What did you say? Table, yeah. Look at the table, exactly. The table is going to give you great points. Now we have three, well, let's go back to zero. Zero, four. You don't have to do all of these points, but a nice little sample would be good. One in point five. And then by two... We're actually back at four. Now, I think we get a little bit lucky here because one of these points is our minimum. But if it wasn't, like what if your minimum happened at like 1.3? That would be troublesome. So another thing that you should get used to doing is knowing how to trace. Because your table is only going to show you nice points. If God forbid things are decimals, which they will be, your table is not going to be the best, especially if that wasn't your minimum point, which it 
luckily is, but let's pretend it wasn't. You can always trace your graph for the critical points. You can trace your graph. We obviously know that that's four because that's zero something. That's the y-intercept. But you can do second trace and look for your minimum. And we want to find the minimum here. So if I would bring my cursor all the way, it's asking for the left bound. I would bring my cursor all the way to the left, hit enter, bring it to the right, hit enter, and then guess, hit enter, and it's gonna give me my minimum point, which is 1.5, 1 1.5 rather, which again, our, our table luckily gave us that point. So we can steal all these points from our table. There's three and 0.5, and four goes back up to four again. 5 and 0.5, and then 6 goes back up to 4 again. Okay? What is the maximum height of the yo yo? 4. What is the minimum height of the yo yo? 0.5. How much time does it take for the yo yo to return to its maximum height for the first time? 2 seconds. In other words, what is that? Your period, exactly. Graphically determine all the times during the first cycle only. So we're just gonna focus in on the first cycle only. When the height of the yo-yo was three feet. Three feet's right here. And in my first cycle, how many times did that happen? How many times did was the yo-yo exactly at three feet off the ground? Twice. Once on the way down, once on the way up. I can guesstimate when that's happening, but something tells me the regents would say to the nearest tenth of a second or something very exact. So this is kind of like that boat problem from yesterday. Go and graph that horizontal line, y equals 3, and then find the point of intersection here and here in that first cycle to figure out the seconds. Second trace, option 5 is intersect and bring your cursor all the way over. We'll get the second one first. Near that point of intersection, hit enter, enter, enter. How many seconds to the nearest tenth? 1.6 seconds, it's at a height of three. And then repeat, second trace, option five, intersection, and scroll your cursor all the way over to the other point of intersection, and hit enter, 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 and we get point now, you should be able to answer those questions without that graph. And here's what I'm here to teach you. Because what's your midline just by looking at this? Knowing what you know about your format. This is your A value. This is your B value, and that's your D value. So what's your midline? 2.25. And this is going to oscillate above and below the midline by the amplitude. So what's the amplitude? 1.75. So the graph, no matter where it starts and ends, is going to go 1.75 units above and 1.75 units below. So if you take your 2.25 midline and add on the 1.7, it's going to give you 4. If you take your midline and you subtract the amplitude, it's going to get you to your minimum. So you should absolutely be able to do these problems without plotting the graph. Okay? And your period you could calculate as well because you know B. It's a little bit different. Normally, we've known our period, we've found our B, but here, we know B, don't we? What is it? Pi. So what's 2 pi over pi? 2, and that's the period that we got. So these questions, although we use the graph, you don't need the graph, okay? You do need the graph and the image on your calculator to do D, though, okay? Exercise 3 here. An athlete was having her blood pressure monitored before, during, and after a workout. The doctors found that her maximum blood pressure was 110. Her minimum was 70. If each heartbeat cycle takes 0.75 seconds, so write a sign model. 
get your function there. A sine B X minus C plus D. So we're going to assume, given that it's a sign, that this starts on the midline. Where is my midline? Ninety. Halfway between the max and the min. So we want this graph to at least to go up to one ten. So if, if I count by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and then one ten is here. Perfect. So we have one ten as our max and 90 as our min. So, oh no, 90 is not our min, 70 is our min, sorry. So our midline, I like to get that on my paper right away. And it's a sine curve, right? Sine curves start on the midline and end on the midline. How long is it going to take to get our full cycle in, did it say? 0.75. So I want to get to 0.75. Maybe I can count by, I don't know, 0 0.10. 0 0.10, 0 0.20, 0 0.30, 0 0.40, 0 0.50, 0 0.60, 0 0.70. So 0.75 would be right about here. Is that fair? So that's where my cycle is going to end. Remember how si I'm going to lightly do this. You watch me, but don't do it. Lightly do this. It's got to go up, come down, and come back up. Yes? Don't do that yet. This crossing of the midline happens halfway between the start and the end. Are we good with that? What's halfway between 0 and 0 0.75? 0 0.75 divided by 2. Right, so we're going to kind of be estimating here 0 0.375, 10, 20, 30, 40. 37.5 is going to be right about there. And then the maximum is going to occur halfway between those two. So what's halfway between 0 and 0.375? Well, I'll divide that by 2. 0.1875, so that's just under 0.20, where I'm going to reach my maximum of 110. And then halfway between 0.375 and 0.75, I'll just average on 0.75 plus 0.375. Take that total and divide it by 2. Is that around 0.56? That's going to be another. And then that minimum is at 70. So those intermediate points didn't really work out well as far as the x-axis was concerned. But we did our best with the scale. Maybe counting by fives would have been smarter because then we would have, but still, we would have had some estimating. At any rate, what is the amplitude? 20, from 90 to 110, 20. Sine, B, have to calculate. Period equals 2 pi over B. Our period is 0.75. So it's not going to be a nice looking B, but who cares? 0.75B equals 2 pi. Divide both sides by 0.75. I'm definitely not going to divide that out. I'm going to keep it as this fraction. So 2 pi over 0.75 x. I don't have a phase shift, so I'm not going to deal with the minus 0 in the parentheses. And then plus my midline, which is 90. Now, the only thing I did wrong, which is something to be very careful of, it's an, a, a very unfortunate spot we have to take off points. And I really don't love it when the, equation, the word problems do this, but they often do, where they tell you to write a sinusoidal model for her blood pressure P. So they're identifying the variables you should be using. Not X and Y like I just used. The blood pressure P, so the Y is a P, as a function of time T in seconds. So your X is really T. And then when you're graphing, label the x-axis, of course, time, and that's t. The y-axis is the blood pressure, and that's p. Nathan. They told us. Oh, no, they didn't. 
Sinus, sinusoidal actually, um, I know it sounds like sine, but sinusoidal actually means just any cosine or sine curve. They would tell you if you wanted to start not at your midline here and you wanted to make it a cosine, you could have. There's going to be multiple versions of the same function. This one is kind of written poorly in that if this was the regions, they would tell you somehow whether you were starting at a minimum or maximum. They'd work it into the explanation. This one did fail to do that. I just made it a sign, you're right, just because I felt like it, I guess. But it could have been done a cosine. You could have started at your maximum or start at your minimum, whatever. Um, any questions on that? Okay. And the last multiple choice exercise here. Take a minute, read that, and I want to see who can come up with this on their own without any instruction, which I think with the knowledge you have and the thinking ability you have, I, I, I know some of you can do it. I know all of you can do it, but I know all of you might not think you can do it and therefore you might give up too early, but let's see who can do it on their own. Jay Kutch, did you already do this one? Oh, good thing. Something that's entirely unrelated to trig that could hold you up if you don't know what that word mean, means is the range. I hope you all know what it means, but I'll just tell you just in case. It's the span of your y values. So from the lowest point on the graph to the highest point on your, the graph. I'm going to have you hold up one, two, three, or four based on your decision. On the count of three. One, two, three. I see ones and twos. The answer is one. But the good news is that the majority of you have one. Is there anybody who thought number two that can share their logic? Because I don't know where four would even come from. like where the number four would come from. So the range being from the lowest point to the highest point really screams minimum and maximum. So knowing that your midline is five and your amplitude is three, that means you go above five by three, which brings you up to eight. And you also go below five by three. If you go below that by three, it brings you to two. Now, I just drew a sine curve. I should have drawn a cosine. But nonetheless, you still get the minimum 2 to the maximum 8, which is number 1. Okay? Can someone tell me where number the 4 came from? A couple of you that thought option 2. All right. I'll have to think about where that 4 was. Obviously, obviously, there's some place where it can come from because they usually write the wrong answers to cater to your misconceptions, to kind of have that there. So there's obviously a reason why people pick four. Any questions on any of this? How are we feeling? Okay, if a stranger walked into the classroom, they think this is the hardest thing in the world, but how are you feeling with it? Yeah? Well, that's good to hear you say, because you've been missing the past few days. Did you watch yesterday's videos? Oh, so you feel caught up. Okay. Um, all right, good. So your homework for tonight is just on the, the back again. Take your time with it. Um, obviously, again, only two questions. So you're meant to put like 10 minutes in each question because there's a lot to it. Tomorrow and Friday, we will be graphing by hand, not using the calculator to cheat. Um, Monday, you're going to have that very brief quiz. 
What do you notice that's been missing from our graphs? What haven't we been graphing? Okay, they've been missing only because I, I've seen that they don't come up often, but we still need to know those. But what trig function haven't we done? Tangent. That's because those are an entirely different beast. And we're not going to do much with those because they don't show up in real life. They don't show up with your Ferris wheel problems. They don't show up with your high tide and low tide. They don't show up with the sunrise and sunset. So they just haven't come up really at all in your exam. We're going to touch on them briefly on Monday after your quiz. And then we'll review Tuesday and your test will be Wednesday. Okay, just to give you the scope of what this chapter looks like moving forward.